The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Q101. WKQX. WKQX HD1 Chicago. A Cumulus Media Station. Now is your chance to qualify to win a trip to Hinterland Music Festival. Message and data rate supply. Please don't text and drive. The best fest is fast fast. Q101. Well, here we go. You text Iowa right now to 312-591-8300 for your chance to get to that Hinterland Music Festival. It is Friday, August 2nd through Sunday, August 4th. You got Noah Khan, Vampire Weekend, Hozier, and tons of other bands. I mean, it's an incredible festival right nearby in Iowa. All qualifiers also win two one-day tickets to Riot Fest. How about that? Two festivals for the price of nothing. Sponsored by your Chicagoland Toyota dealers, Toyota, let's go places. And, of course, from Brian and Kenzie on Q101. So, once again, text IOWA, I-O-W-A, to 312-591-8300. The Q101 Morning Crew. Sports. All right, well, big day for your Chicago Bears as uh, stuff's getting real tonight as the schedule will be dropped at 7 o'clock tonight. The Bears schedule and tickets will also be on sale for individual games uh, tonight, which are supposed to go up about 8% on average of the ticket prices for Soldier Field. The old one, not the new one that won't be built pretty much at this point. Now, we already know who they're playing. Obviously, you you know, the Packers, Lions, Vikings uh, in the division, the Rams, Seahawks, the Titans, the Jaguars, the Panthers, and the Patriots will all be at home. And then, of course, Packers, Lions, Vikings, Cardinals, 49ers, Texans, Indianapolis Colts, and the Commanders away games. Now, by a strength of schedule that's already out there by those teams and what they did last year, the Bears have the third easiest schedule of teams to play against next year in the NFL, setting them up to win with all these new players. Caleb Williams, uh, a shining spotlight, possibly the best offense in the NFL. That's what's being worked on right now, easily with the players that they have. It could be an incredible year for your Chicago Bears. And that's not me saying, yeah, it's all going to fall apart. Wait till next year. I believe. I do. I really do believe in this year. I'm going all in, and I'm happy. That fired me up. Oh, my God. Let's go. Let's go. I just feel like we just stopped talking about the Bears. We just That happened fast. We're just going to talk about them again? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Kenzie, like, football, football's it's, right around the corner. It's a big September day. 5th, it's baby. a big day. Yeah. Well, then it's Christmas. <laughs> yeah. yeah football. And we get to do our gift exchange. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So talking about the Bears in May just made you think of getting gifts? Yes. Okay, that's fair. I just got, I literally like two nights ago, I was thinking about our Christmas gift exchange. Jesus. For the next year. <laughs> it's my favorite day. It's very, she really looked forward to it. Uh, and that, that was when we got close to it. We're a ways off. Now, there's always been some leaks about tonight's schedule. This is huge. Uh, we already know about the Hall of Fame game, Chicago Bears versus the Texans uh, in Canton, August 1st, that will open up the season. That's always a fun game. That's cool. They're, do, they're putting the Bears prime time right there to open up the season and preseason. How about this, though? Week 6, Jaguars at the Bears. And where do the Jaguars often play because they're basically loved by England? The Bears, Texans, I'm sorry, Bears, Jaguars in England on Sunday, October 13th at Tottenham Stadium. That's awesome. In London, England. And I've, I can say this. I've seen a football game in London at Wembley Stadium. I was, I'm not saying I'm privileged. I'm just saying I got, I, I got uh, lucky enough. Well, basically, I had to do it to keep my girlfriend at the time, Megan. She basically said, if we don't go traveling, I didn't have a passport at the time. Uh, this is six years ago. And she said, if you don't get a passport, this relationship is just going to be me going off with my friends overseas and you're going to be staying home. So I said, I better and get a she's pa- way too hot for that nonsense. <laughs> Clearly. So. I bet you've never run an errand faster in your <laughs> life. I ran to a post office and went, <sighs> 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 you, how do you get a passport? Passport. You should be like royalty over there. You can't have that. <laughs> well, I got the passport quick, and I got over there for the Eagles-Jaguars game because that's basically their other home team, the Jaguars, is London. They play there so often, and they lo- it was crazy at Wembley Stadium. I've, people think that, oh, they don't care about American football over there. They do, and they buy uniforms, and stay, and they go crazy like a soccer game at an NFL game. So we should go to that Jaguars-Bears game that in London. Say, we should do a live broadcast there. Okay, we've been talking about, mainly me, that we should do a trip. <laughs> mainly Kenzie. For mainly st- me. Absolutely, facts. But it's part of the, I'm part of the group. Yeah, yeah. How, how, <laughs> how fun of a trip to do London for the Bears game, get, like, get all of our Chicago people there. Well, what would be cool is, of Kenzie, since you want to spearhead this. Yes. 
when we get off the air, um, yeah. we could make some kind of package for a flight, hotel, Airbnb, whatever, that our listeners could buy for a fair price because right now it's really hard. I, I, but actually, I will say, my wife was looking at flights overseas. This is a side conversation, but to go to Sweden to see Taylor Swift, okay? And oh. it, it's cheaper to go over there than to go to Indianapolis to watch Taylor Swift. That is a, that's what I'm saying. The tickets were cheaper and... America's the, very expansive. I paid 600 bucks to go to Nashville a couple weeks ago to visit my mom. And you can get a $600 flight to Europe. You can get that same flight to London. Right. So we can work out some numbers here, crunch it, and maybe do a broadcasting, take listeners like all there. GoFundMe, is that what you're saying? Well, that's what I'm looking at, Go yeah. GoFundUs. <laughs> Thanks, can we get a GoFundMe up for our trip? I like Kenzie's joke, Go fund us. That's Go very fund funny. Us. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, the Q stands for Quest. <laughs> let's let's just take a poll here to give to our boss. How many listeners, when you text in here after you texted in the for the contest at three one two five nine one eight hundred, would be up, would be able to do that? I get everybody's tight on money; it's really hard. But if we got a good price for this to go see a Bears game in London. It is a once in a lifetime well, experience. Don't you think? And I know I'm getting in trouble for saying this because every time I suggest something, I get in trouble. <laughs> my boss is like, "Stop suggesting things live on the radio." Oh, and I'm like, my bad. I did it this one though. I did this one. I know, but my suggestion with it is like, can't we just give the trip away can't somebody else pay for it we give it away to our listeners maybe we could do that that's what i want to do i want to do that too i I understand i want to do that too a mother Teresa over here (laughs) all of a sudden i can't wait to get a sidebar about like is that a good idea to say whatever sorry i care it's a good idea it's Thank the, you. The logistics might be tough on this no one. No one ever cares about my ideas. Okay, K- Kinsey's job interview here, they're like, what are your weaknesses? And she's like, well, I care too much. I'm yeah. too giving. I'm too charitable. Sorry I don't want our listeners to have to pay for things <laughs> when Brian and Case do. I don't want anybody to pay for anything so, for the I record. Know, I'm sorry that I'm the only one uh, who thinks our listeners yeah. should go for free. That's the cross I have to bear. Right. Well, you guys want them to pay for everything. Right. I'm sorry that I just don't. Yeah. I, so I'm sorry. I love it when our listeners pay for stuff. Oh, that's my I, favorite it's thing. It's my favorite. I sleep good at night better. And I don't. When I know it people, bothers me. When I know people can't buy oranges yeah. at the grocery store. But, but like, I'm the, I, I know I'm the villain. I know I'm the one that bothers, and I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, at least you accepted the role, and, and you know, it's your cross to bear. I know. Not to be appreciated in this lifetime. I know. But the sorry. next one, look out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Before we get you on the phones for Clash with Kenzie, a, a lot of progress has been made during that Linkin Park uh, two-minute song uh, to work on a Bears trip to London for the game that's going to be announced tonight at 7 o'clock officially, most likely. Not uh, the trip we're giving away, but just the game. No, everybody wants this free trip now, Kenzie. Congratulations. I, I've, that's what I'm saying. I No one thinks that my ideas are popular, and I yes. feel like I have really good ideas. Um, who's no one? Because I mean, I think, it, I think it's a good idea. To have, a, to, to have a free trip to listen to. I feel to... like you, Case, and everybody who's in charge of me at this company. <laughs> in charge of you? Yeah. <laughs> they never like my ideas. Uh, I always have ideas. Uh-huh. And I always say stuff, and everyone just moves on. Mm. Now, what did you do to follow through on this idea of the free bear trip so far in that two minutes? Have you made a call? Um, I complained about it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you did. That's a fact. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. And we're starting I got to break ground first. We're starting to go fund us. It's going to yeah. be up soon. I uh, need people. I need my bosses to get annoyed. Uh-huh. Here's my here's my plan. Yeah. I'm going to annoy them until they're oh. like, if we do it, she's not going to talk anymore. Hmm. Wow. Because, um, <laughs> That's an noticed, interesting theory. I've noticed when I've gone in there with a good presentation, it doesn't work. So now uh, I'm just going to be awful to uh, deal with and see if that helps. Going away from me. And the, I'm doing it for the people. I understand. <laughs> I understand. I got your. So I'm going to go in there uh-huh. and I'm going to make them almost consider firing me, mm. but then realize that I just had a baby. So it'd be like super illegal. It'd be like a whole thing. Mm. And then they'll be like, well, how else could we get her to leave us alone besides firing her, which is going to be a whole thing because she just had a baby. I think you and fire like, people just out of baby. Yeah, I, think you can. I don't think there's a law against that. There's usually like a statue. Well, I'd sue them and say it's because of the baby. <laughs> <laughs> I say it's because you hate my baby. And they know that I would do that. Uh, so yeah, then they they're like, that's going to be a whole venture. So uh, let's not deal with that. So okay. what else could we do? We could just help and get these listeners the trip they deserve. Mm. So that's my plan. Got it. How do you think it's going to work out? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm inspired tomorrow. <laughs> Couldn't you just call the Bears? Wouldn't that be easier? Yeah. Wouldn't you just call, like, all of them? Well, <laughs> well I'm sure you, I, I mean, you know. Hey. <laughs> it's been a while. Whoa. Half of them weren't on the team anymore from yeah. when I was in there. <laughs> Go 
couple of years ago, I uh, could have made that phone call. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All, All right. Different states. We're still working on it. 312 591 8300. Call now for something else. How about uh, Fontaine's DC tickets? If you beat Kenzie in trivia, call up now with your trivia A game. And everybody gets something. We got awesome uh, movie screening passes for the new Mad Max movie, Furiosa. It's part of that universe. It's an incredible movie, one of the greatest movies of the last 10 years of that um, genre that they've done. So you get, everybody wins, basically. 312-591-8300. Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. You can't defeat her. She's too powerful. With Kenzie. <laughs> Let the battle begin. Q101. All right, we got the Fontaine's DC tickets for Salt Shed coming up in October on the line. And you know what? If you lose, you still get something. The Furiosa Mad Max Saga movie passes for the return of that series, which one of the best movies of the last 10 years. So that's coming up. And Ben will have a chance in Indiana competing against Kenzie in trivia for these tickets. Ben, what's up? Tell us something about yourself. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, Ben, what's going on? Oh, nothing much. Out on the road, just having a great time this morning. Love listening to your guys' show. Called in this morning and very excited to play today. Hell yeah. I just have to ask, is this by chance Ben Knee the Bull? <laughs> or is it? No. Because <laughs> we can't see your face, so you could give us your identity right now. Are you a fuzzy bull? Uh, that's up to your guys' imagination. Oh, my God, Ooh, it is. It's him. Oh, Any my ball God. Competing against Kenzie right now. Ugh. All right, here we go. First one of five wins. Listen carefully. If Kenzie gets one wrong, you can steal a point, and she can do the same to you. Call heads or tails, Ben? I'm going to call... I'm going to call tails today. It is tails today. There you go. Sweet. Congratulations. Benny has a tail. <laughs> All right, man. Here we go. Question number one. Who voiced the character of Woody in the Toy Story movies? What actor? Oh, uh, man. Tim Allen? Not Tim Allen. Kenzie, do you know? Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks did Woody. Tom Hanks, that's Tom right. Tom Hanks did Woody. There you go. Kenzie's got one. Uh, Kenzie, uh, where would one join the Mile High Club? A uh, plane. Mm. Qu- quick answer on that one. Sorry, I just know it. Oh. I was pretty, I was also fast with Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. <laughs> 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 He's Tom like, Hanks. aha, you're a whore. <laughs> oh, no, no, I got to die. <laughs> he twirls mustache. Uh, <laughs> all right. Two, two to nothing, nothing and back to Ben. Ben, Sarah Jessica Parker and Kim Cattrall played the two lead roles in what infamous HBO show? Uh, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones <laughs> would be amazing with Sarah Jessica Parker. Especially Kim Cattrall would be amazing. Uh, she, could be, she could have been Daenerys. <laughs> oh, okay? She God. got that spunk. That would be great. Uh, that's not this show, but good guess. At least you're guessing, buddy. Sex in the City. Sex in the City. Kenzie up three nothing yeah. fast. And back to her again. Uh, Kenzie, what president had polio? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I Was it George Washington? He had all those teeth issues. Yeah. That had nothing to do with polio, but it wasn't George Washington. I just, I just assume health issues as a whole. I just lumped it all together. <laughs> a lot of problems. Uh, no, Ben, do you know? Uh, was it James Polk? <laughs> uh, he was never president, but he invented the vaccine. I was vaccine. just going to say, I didn't know he was president. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe he uh, was a president, James Polk. Maybe he was. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe he was a president. I was thinking of the, there's a vaccine for polio, I believe. And there's a Polk vaccine, I think. James Polk was the 11th president of the United States. Damn, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, Ben. You should apologize again. I apologize. He's That's a good man. All right. we, we all have our moments. That's right. <laughs> we all have our moments. Uh, all right. Uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt had polio. It was always in a oh, wheelchair. Man. They wouldn't let him show the wheelchair. That's right. Uh, hit it from people. And an iconic scene in Pearl Harbor. I haven't seen it. Uh, oh, God. It's I not... actually haven't seen that one either. <laughs> um, Josh Josh Hartnett, a uh, very good-looking guy. Ben Affleck. Mm-hmm. Uh, very good movie. We talking about Pearl Harbor still? Yeah. Okay. Actually, I, I, let me take it back. It's a I crappy... I didn't associate Pearl Harbor and Ben Affleck. <laughs> I thought we maybe switched subjects. No. Well, ben Affleck wasn't there, but he was an actor in the movie about uh-huh. it. And, you know, actually, it's a terrible... He's been through a lot. Yeah, terrible movie, but... The fight scene of Pearl Harbor is unbelievable. It's not a good movie? It's not a good movie, but uh, the incredible Pearl Harbor scene is unbelievable. Oh, I thought it was a good movie. It's not. Was it popular? Uh, it did okay. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, well, Ben's not doing okay. Three to nothing, it's back to him. Okay, Ben. Uh, which artist performed the 2001 song Picture with Kid Rock? 
Oh, Cheryl Crow. There My you man. go. Ben got on the board. Love that song. There He's you go. In. Yeah, don't ask why I know that. I just know it. No, I like <laughs> to drink you away. <laughs> That's my going. favorite part. Keep going, Kenzie. That's all I remember was my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> Three to one back to Kenzie. All right, Kenzie. Uh, gray, blue, bowhead, and finback are varieties of what? Oh, like a whale? It is a whale. Okay. Good job. <laughs> all right, she's got four. Ben, you need this one. Uh, ben, what was the name of Bam Margera's MTV reality show that ran from 2003 to 2006? Oh, uh, man, I know it wasn't Jackass. No. Uh, trying to think. Hmm. Think quick. Three, uh, two, one. Ah. I don't know. Kenzie for the win. <sighs> I said Bam. Bam I want to say, God, this may sound stupid if I'm wrong, though. Well, then just, just say it. You, believe in yourself. Which never happens to me. Um, <laughs> is it Viva La Bam? It is Viva La Bam. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know why. Like, like a core memory, but... Well, because it was an awesome show. That was awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's why you remember it. That was going to be the worst guest uh, ever. No. This week on Viva La Bam, Bam's going to beat up his dad. Yeah. Again. God, it was so good. It didn't matter how many times. What a show. He was so mean to I forgot how mean he was to his dad. It was awful. Yeah. Yeah, Phil. Uh, Phil Margera. I felt, I felt pretty bad for his dad, uh-huh. actually. Well, karma's got Bam, so sadly, Jeez. rough stretch lately. Wow. Uh, Why was he got going on? I didn't know that. I don't want to get into it. He's not doing great. He's not doing great right Lil now. Lil Viva. Lil Lost Viva. A lot of Bam Bam. Oh, no. Oh, all right, Ben. You've got uh, tickets for the Mad Max saga. We'll give you those as a consolation prize. Go see the movie Return of the Mad Max Universe with this uh, Furioso, a Mad Max saga. Okay, bud? Oh, uh, sweet. Thank you guys so much. Oh, thank you, man. You get something. That's what we want to make sure you got something. Now, everybody else stay put. Uh, we'll play uh, Bob Moses. And when we come back after this in about two and a half minutes, Fontaine's DC tickets for the Salt Shed can be yours. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. <laughs> Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. About 14 minutes away from 8 a.m. And that'll be Billy Eilish tickets on the way for you. Just 8 a.m. Just moments away here with Brian and Kenzie on Q101. You know, I'm not going to hit the pour one out song for this one, but it's another iconic thing in Chicago changing its name. You know, Sears Tower, Comiskey Park. I thought it was going to be you again because you've been lightning around Lewis, Sludge, Ryan. I was like, oh, gosh, what's happening now? You're I've, reinventing yourself. I've also, as I shocked Case yesterday yeah, in a discussion be, off the air. He threw a new name at me I had never heard before. That you've had before or uh, that you want to start using? <laughs> no, that I've had before on the radio when but I was starting out. I'm not out. calling you lightning rod. You don't have to. I'm Brian. <laughs> I would never uh, put that in any kind of, um, you know, mantra that that's what I want to be called from now on. I, I like using Brian. I used sludge for many years. My dad hated it. And uh, uh, people loved it. So yeah, yeah, I said, of course da- your dad hated the word sludge. He named you Brian. That's right. He wasn't looking for something like he wanted you to be straightforward. I know. But when everybody loved sludge, I said, shut up, dad. See, I made it. Sludgy. And then <laughs> <laughs> you sound like the girl from Monsters Inc. <laughs> Mike Wazowski. <laughs> so this doesn't involve me. It involves the city of Chicago. These great iconic names: the Comiskey Park, Sears Tower, Lakeshore no, Drive. Wait, you just yeah, said on, tell Kinsey your old name. Yeah, there was a oh, new oh, name. Oh, on oh, oh, I want to go over wait that. Wait a minute. <laughs> All right, stop the show. So Sludge, Lightning Rod. I've been Roadkill. I was the other name I had. One of the other names. There's still some more. Uh, I was Cody the Surfer. <laughs> Where? I don't know. When I was 19 years old on another, that's how I started in radio, I was Cody the Surfer. Why are you called Cody? Because, or the Surfer. Well, I don't, I, don't, fair, I, fair I, don't, I don't surf. I just started talking like Spicoli from Fast Times, Ridgemont High. Let me hear you. Like okay. Oh, man, all I need are some tasty waves and a cool buzz, and so I'm fine. So were you, like, fine. a character? Well, I, I turned into one. I didn't expect it. They threw me on the air one day. So I you talked that. like that? You didn't expect to become a character? <laughs> yeah. I thought it would be a one-time deal, and it turned out I lasted about three years on the show this being Cody like the Surfer. This is like Phoebe accidentally talked preppy in front of her boyfriend's parents, and she kept having to do it. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you got so nervous that you just yeah. started talking like that? Exactly. Huge, huge. Cody the Surfer. Yeah. What city? City was this? This was in Toledo, Ohio, when I was in college, starting out my radio so career. So also not a surfing city. Oh, what are you talking about? It's 
the Huntington Beach of the Midwest. There's a I lake mean, there, just like here. There's Lake Erie on Toledo, so people uh, uh, eventually go out there and not surf. They, they fish for walleye there. But where did Cody come from? No idea. I was thrown on the spot, <laughs> a gun to my head, say something, and I did, and that's what came out. Did you say, I'm Cody, or did they just start calling you that? I just went like, oh, man. And then they were Cody. like, they, I, I said, who are you? I go, I'm Cody, because that's the only name I could think of that would be like a surfer dude. Why didn't you think of your own name? Brian doesn't uh, Brian. sound like doesn't sound like a surfer guy. Oh, so... Yeah, that's how I was for three years on the radio. Yep, just like I, that. I think that you're gonna end up on Kenzie's crimes one day because the amount of aliases you have had, <laughs> we're gonna discover you've murdered so many. Nobody changes their actual name this much. I've murdered Brian quite a few times. I know. <laughs> Trying to get away from it. Your poor father is like, why do you hate me? You like every other name that's ever existed. Oh, he uh, he was so happy when I started using Brian uh, about six seven years ago. Here, I got the Q101. He was so happy about that. Finally. Yeah. So uh, other Chicago names. All uh, right, Cody. What's uh, the story about? All right. So you got <laughs> Sears Tower. You got. You got Comiskey Park, man. Uh, you've got uh, Lakeshore Drive. All these things have changed in the last several years. But there's another one, an iconic, iconic Chicago name that's going away. And I'm not even pour one out because the, the thing itself is not going away, but the name kind of is. It is the Museum of Science and Industry. Such a joyous place. I love What are they going to call it? Well, here's what happened five years ago. Uh, the richest man in Illinois. He was at the time Kenneth C. Griffin. Okay, he actually moved to Miami, so he doesn't live here anymore. I was gonna say he sounds rich. Your name is Griffin. As Kenneth C. Griffin, man, or it'd be somewhere like um, Kenneth C. Griffin. Now you sound like Phoebe. <laughs> he was the wealthiest man in Illinois. Um, he started a Citadel hedge fund. If you're one of those finance people, okay. So he did that, and five years ago, he gave 125 million dollars of his money to the Museum of Science and Industry. And they said at the time, we talked about this, there was going to be a name change involved. Got kind of mad about it back then. But then, you know, just went away. The name change never happened. And now it's going to be officially called. Are you ready for it? Uh-huh. The new name of the museum will officially be called the Kenneth C. Griffin Museum of Science and Industry. Oh. That's the new name. <laughs> It's a bit long. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little long. All the new names are long. Like, what is it? Jean Point du Sable Lakeshore Drive. It's just Lakeshore Drive. You know, we, Garen- call it, we should just call it KFG. KFG? That's not bad. Know. Well, they know by guaranteed rate field of Comiskey becomes called, and people call it the rate, and was U.S. cellular field, they called it the cell. Sears Tower, just no one ever called it Willis Tower. If you do, no. oh, God. Big Willie, that's what I called it. That's not a bad name for it, actually. Uh, okay. You know what? I was excited for the name change, but I saw this. I didn't know what they were changing it to, though, because I don't understand what the word industry means in it. Science Museum and industry? Hmm. What industry? Well. Of you, what? You've been there. I yeah. Know, and you love it. Saw a lot of science. That so, part made sense. So, for example, I told, asked Case during the commercial break, and, and I said, have you ever been there? And he goes, I don't think so. Well, I asked if it was the one with the dinosaur. And I said, that's the Field Museum. And I said, no, there's an effing jet in this one. <laughs> And right. that's, that's the industry part. They like there's stuff of the airline industry or all stuff in there. There's a submarine in there. Yeah, I know. It was in the submarine. It's awesome. It's cool. That's so cool. Case, there's I a, can't there's an effing you. submarine in there, Case. Get down to the museum. Is it underwater? But there's so many industries. So you can't say end industry. It should be like end a bunch of industries. Well, it's it's industry. I don't think they, they're, they're going to change the name again. I was like, what industry? <laughs> that's it. So those are the industries. Like, Airline so industry. companies that, like, they're, they're referencing the companies that no, own they're, products? They're, they're referencing, basically, flight and space, you know, because the, huh. I, I believe the SpaceX rocket is going to go there. So this is a great thing. This is a great thing that the money was given to make the museum better and keep it going because just like everything else, things are hurting in the inflation times. And I don't know, man. I went there over holiday break. Mm. And it was so busy, I couldn't move. It's a great museum. I also waited like an hour and a half for Stan's Donuts inside the Science Museum and Industry of J- JFC. <laughs> <laughs> and planes and submarines. It should be called Industries. the Stan's Donuts Science and Industry <laughs> yeah. Museum. You have no idea. People, you wouldn't think there was a Stan's Donuts nowhere else because everybody wants to go there. Yeah. And I'm like, well, there's one on Michigan, like five minutes from here with a, that's there, larger. There's a lot of locations of Stan's Donuts. But these children, they're just... The donut shop should never be there. 
Because you're trying to have children learn, and then they just see donuts, and they're just... It's all gone. Then they're just animals. Yeah, like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, look at that plane. He's like, are we getting donuts? I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> There's a freaking jet inside there. I'm like, we're inside a submarine. He goes, is there a donut shop in the submarine also? <laughs> the whole day. The whole day was just about the donut shop. We should have obviously went first and made a mistake. Will there be stewardesses in that plane passing out donuts if I, I go in there? Yeah. I just, it's like everything became a hunt for more donuts. Like, I don't think anybody's ever going to call it this. It's the Museum of Science and Industry. And it's great that a, a rich guy took a lot of his money, I mean a lot of it, to keep the museum going and get new things. Uh, there's a lot of new exhibits that are going to be coming. A uh, new home for the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft that flew two missions to the International Space Station in 2019. Um, there's going to be a new film, A Superhuman Body, World of Medical Marvels. That's going to be at the Giant Dome Theater. So a lot of things are going to happen because he gave this money. And also, like, I hate name changes. Like I said, it's, it's what it is. But however, I'm going to be a hypocrite right now because if I had $125 million to give, oh, uh -huh. holy crap, I'd forget about the Museum of Science and Industry part. It's the Brian Haddad Museum. <laughs> Enjoy it, effers. That's maybe the new name of the museum. You know what? I'd prefer the museum because there'd be more donut shops. <laughs> <laughs> The Brian and Kenzie Show on Q101.